So why does kernel locks matter? It matters for performance. Different locks show different performance for application. As you can see, simply changing lock design can have a big impact on application performance and scalability. However, when you use another type of workload, the performance might be completely opposite. Even if lock A performs well in read-intensive workload, the performance drops dramatically on write-intensive workload. This tells us one lock cannot rule all scenarios. Depending on various scenarios, different lock can perform best. Here, the scenarios include system hardware configuration or software characteristics of application. Let's first see the hardware side. For the example of hardware, we can first come up with NUMA. On NUMA architecture, there are multiple sockets and each socket has its own processors, memory, and cache. In this NUMA environment, accessing data from a local socket is much faster than accessing data in remote socket. To achieve higher performance, developers can prioritize local access over remote access. AMP can be another example. Apple's M2 chip has four performance cores and four slower cores in one processor. When all eight cores are competing for a lock, to get better performance, developers may want to give faster cores more opportunities to grab a lock. Moreover, software characteristics of application also affect the lock. In other words, different lock can perform best depending on a workload. As we just saw in the graph, read-write ratio affects the lock performance. And there's more things to consider, such as how long each thread holds the lock, or is there any specific threads need to be prioritized? In addition to the lock used in user space, kernel locks also affect application performance. For example, when application have system call, the kernel threads internally use kernel locks. Since the kernel locks sit on the application's path, they do affect application performance. However, kernel implementations are application agnostic, that is, kernel locks are not aware of the application context. Kernel locks are invisible and out of reach of application developers. Instead, kernel developers make all the decisions and implement generic design to support common scenarios. Therefore, it limits the performance and scalability of applications and hardware. What is worse, kernel locks are difficult to change. Kernel locks are statically compiled in the kernel, so if you want to change it, you need to modify the kernel code, compile it, install it, and then reboot the system. Here's the problems with current kernel locks. First of all, current log implementations are application agnostic. Also, only a few logs contend for a given work application, which means even if you decide to modify a spin lock in the kernel, you don't actually need to change every spin lock in the kernel. Finally, it is difficult to implement a new lock design that requires careful use of atomic instructions. To address these issues, we designed and implemented Syncrude. With our framework, now an application developers can safely change kernel locks on the fly without rebooting the system. Instead of changing all locks together, now user can modify a set of locks at various granularities. And lastly, Syncrude exposes a set of APIs to easily write various lock policies. Most of current lock designs follow queue-based ideology, so let's see how they work. To access shared resources, threads first need to acquire a lock. If lock is free and no one else is using it, thread direc directly acquires a lock. After that, more threads try to use a lock. Since a lock is already held, other threads join the waiting queue. While waiting, threads can reorder themselves in the queue. For example, shuffle lock and CNA has a mechanism to reorder waiters and group threads from a same socket. 
When thread finished using the resource, it released the lock and leave the critical section. Then, next waiter acquired the lock and be a lock holder. This is how Q-based lock works. We followed these key behaviors. What Synchro do is, it exposes these behaviors as an API to user. These APIs place as a hooking points where user's custom code will be inserted. Should reorder API is a little more special than other APIs because it asks user to return a Boolean value. Similar to the comparison function for a sort function, when should reorder returns true, it moves the current node forward. Otherwise, when it returns false, the node just stays in, in its position in the queue. Let's see the synchronous overview with an example of implementing NUMA aware lock. Since local access is faster than remote access, grouping waiters from a same socket can achieve better performance by minimizing cache line bouncing. For the first step to develop a lock policy, user create lock policy in C style code and specify the target point to modify. Then the code is passed to Syncrud, and Syncrud take care of everything else from there. Syncrud compiles the user's program into bytecode and passes it to eBPF verifier to check whether the given code is safe to install in the kernel or not. The verifier limits the memory access of user's program so that log instance cannot be changed arbitrarily. In addition, log policy program can only use predefined functions and lastly, the verifier makes sure there is no unbounded loop. If the code passed the verifier, now it's turn for lock patcher. Lock patcher internally use live patch and insert user's code to the target point. Once the patch is done, now the rename lock becomes NUMA aware. Here's the result, the workload rename files in a directory, so it's contending on a rename lock. X-axis is the number of threads and Y-axis is throughput. The experiment is measured on 24 core machines with eight sockets, so each socket has 28 threads. When the rename lock is updated with Syncro to be NUMA aware, the performance increased more than 2.5x. In addition, Syncro's dynamic approach shows similar performance to the same log algorithm implemented statically. Then one might come with a question, what if a user provides wrong code? Thanks to the verifier and the API design, Syncrude prevents such user from crashing the kernel. Even if we provide APIs to user, the underlying mechanism remains intact. User's custom logic only provides a hint for reordering but does not change the basic mechanism to acquire and release a lock. In addition, lock pointer passed to API is limited as read-only data. As a result, user can never break mutual exclusion while having power to control the kernel lock. Therefore, with Syncrude, user can prioritize or penalize specific threads with reordering policy. User can also run additional code block in predefined hooking points to get some semantics or profiling data. With this change, user can affect performance and the fairness. However, since the underlying mechanism remains intact, user can never break mutual exclusion. We have five use cases in our paper, and I'll briefly introduce each of them. Each use case is customized for underlying hardware, software characteristics, or even both of them. The first one, NUMA aware lock, is already covered in previous slides. An asymmetric multi-core lock is a use case customized for AMP processor, which has fast cores and slow cores together. Scheduler cooperative lock considers the length of critical section and guarantees fair lock usage across threads. On top of that software customization, we also have NUMA aware version of SCL. I'll show a quick demo for this use case shortly after the talk. 
Biased per CPU read write log is for read intensive workload, and dynamic log profiling let user to profile kernel logs in fine grained manner. For the details of each use cases, please refer our paper, and in the rest of the talk, let's take a deeper look for dynamic log profiling. When compared to traditional tool for log profiling, Syncrude's dynamic log profiling has many benefits. First of all, Syncrude enables fine-grained profiling of kernel logs. Instead of tracing every kernel logs, Syncrude user can select which log to trace. To enable logstat, the kernel should be compiled with a specific flag, so it requires system reboot. What is worse, logs that degrade performance and increase memory usage from the booting time. On contrast, Syncrude can enable profiling feature dynamically, and there is no memory overhead once it's disabled. Here's the graph showing the slowdown between logs that and a dynamic log profiling. Since Logstat traces every log in the kernel and collects 10 kinds of statistics, Logstat constantly incurs 60% application slowdown. On the other hand, dynamic log profiling with Syncrude shows much lower slowdown because it can trace only a single log instance and collect specific statistics. When a thread acquires a log, log acquired API is triggered. Within the API, User write their own code to gather statistics. In this simplistic example, we, counter, we count the number of log acquisition and store a timestamp in hold start. When a thread about to release a log, log release is triggered, and within this release API, we, we calculate the length of critical section and get the cumulative log hold time. By the way, where these variables come, come from? Syncrude allows users to add auxiliary data structures, and this is allocated dynamically when installed a policy, and the memory is freed when the policy is uninstalled. Therefore, having Syncrude does not introduce any memory overhead when there is no policy installed. Okay, so I'll show a quick live demo how Syncrude changed kernel logs on the fly. I'm going to run a simple benchmark that heavily stress the rename log in the kernel. Here, the benchmark runs with eight bully threads. Here, the benchmark runs with eight bully threads and eight victim threads, where the bully holds the log almost 10 times longer than victim. The above graph shows how fairly those threads use the log. Since bully holds log much longer than victim, the fairness is very low, around 0.6. The graph below shows the throughput of Boolean victim, and the star indicates victim threads, and the black bar indicates bully threads. Their throughput is similar, so the graph is now overlapped. Okay, then let's install our custom policy. Through this policy, we want to make those threads to hold the lock for equal amount of time. Right after we install the policy, the fairness is now much higher. Also, the victim's throughput increased because now it has more opportunity to grab a lock. And this is done without rebooting, the, and we can do it dynamically on the fly. Of course, we can also install the uninstall the policy. And now the fairness and throughput go back to the vanilla Linux. In conclusion, kernel logs are basic building blocks of current OS and affect performance and scalability of applications. However, they are out of reach of application developers, so we designed a syncrud framework which allow users to fine-tune locking primitives dynamically. Syncrud exposes a set of user implementable APIs, and installing a lock policy does not require reinstalling the kernel or rebooting the system. With Syncrude, application can now address pathological locking cases. Thank you for listening, and I am happy to get more questions.